We're going to talk about uh, one of these episodes in the 1920s, uh, infamous, infamously called the Scopes Monkey Trial. Uh, the context for this discussion is not only the 20s, but a bigger context. Uh, rural America versus urban America. Uh, Victorian certainties versus modern improvisation. Uh, Old-fashioned WASP values versus an emerging scientific world. Uh, significance. Uh, the challenge here to old-fashioned values is symptomatic of the 1920s, and this, of course, will continue throughout the rest of the century as biblical fundamentalism or biblical literalism is increasingly challenged uh, by science. Uh, you're going to see the prevailing here of modern skepticism over old-fashioned certainty in things. Darwin, of course, Charles Darwin, British naturalist, published uh, on the descent of species his theory of natural selection and evolution in 1859. This is clearly one of the uh, uh, very distinct paradigm shifts in human history. Previous to Darwin, the notion of uh, life on Earth uh, being derived from a creator, uh, from God. Darwin fundamentally changed this idea by demonstrating that uh, species are not static, that they're ever evolving, uh, that a supernatural power is not necessary, or at least is not evident in the emergence of life on Earth and all of its great varieties. Um, this, of course, is a direct challenge to biblical literalism. And Protestant America, uh, more so than the Catholic Church, Protestant America is a more literalist uh, population. Uh, that is, they take the Bible at its superficial meaning as opposed to its deeper symbolic meaning. Uh, what is it about Darwin's ideas that threaten traditional America? Um, those things I just mentioned, uh, the notion that species can evolve from other species and that indeed species become extinct. Uh, the biblical notion of God's creatures not being perfect and going extinct runs counter to traditional wasp culture. Uh, Darwin demonstrated that species are mutable. You can find um, variations of species in the fossil record. God is omitted, of course, from um, on the origin of species. Uh, Protestant America viewed Darwin as an increase as an in, uh, increasingly uh, secularization of the United States. That is, moving away from the church and the interpretation of history uh, through church through the church's eyes to uh, a more secular view of life on Earth. That is a more scientific view. The trial in Dayton, Tennessee in 1925 is going to illustrate the, uh, the difference between a literal and a figurative reading of the Bible. And of course, Darwin's argument by natural selection uh, contradicts the traditional creationist argument um, whereby creatures are the result of a design, of an, of a, of an intelligent designer. Now, Darwin's theory of, uh, of evolution is also an epistemological challenge to traditional Americans. How do we know things? Uh, all of you know the suffix, ology, the study of. Epistemine from the Greek is knowledge. So epistemology is the study of how we know things, an investigation into knowledge. Uh, Darwin's uh, theory of natural selection forces people to think about how they know things. Do we know things through faith? Do we know things through science? I think uh, indeed we, know, uh, we can know the world both ways, but we need to think critically about how we think and how we know. Um, the Tennessee legislature passes the Butler Act in 1925. Uh, this law made it a crime uh, to teach Darwinian evolution. 
uh, let me see what my quote here says. It says, made it a crime to teach any theory that denies the story of divine creation of man as taught in the Bible, and to teach instead that, the man, that man has descended from a lower order of animals. This law was challenged by the American Civil Liberties Union. The ACLU looked purposefully for a teacher who would be willing to challenge this law by teaching evolution in the classroom. And they found uh, a young biology teacher in Dayton, Tennessee. His name was John Scopes. Uh, he was only in his 20s, and he, uh, he agreed with the ACLU's arguments and decided to become sort of a guinea pig for this challenge to the Butler Act. Uh, the trial itself uh, soon became known as the Monkey Trial. Uh, again, uh, uh, the scientifically illiterate have this notion of man um, deriving directly from a monkey, and of course this is nonsense. But this image was uh, parodied and uh, you could go to Dayton, Tennessee during the trial and you could buy monkeys, uh, stuffed monkeys, and uh, other paraphernalia. Indeed, this hucksterism is prevalent during the monkey trial or listen to me, during the Scopes trial. Um, businesses did very well. The hotels, the bars, the restaurants, the boarding houses, uh, business in Dayton, Tennessee. It was like a giant circus had come to town. Uh, the United States press was there. Uh, radio was there. Uh, famous attorneys were there. Uh, large crowds came to Dayton to witness this history in the, in the making. The um, the two attorneys are quite famous. Clarence Darrow um, would defend John Scopes. Darrow was well known as a defender of, uh, what was the, what did they used to say? He was the defender of the damned. He would defend socialists and labor unions and uh, these type of things. So he's there to defend Scopes. The prosecution includes one of the most famous men in America, William Jennings Bryan. Bryan, of course, had run three times for president. He'd lost all three times. Uh, but he was easily one of the most famous men in the country. He was a literalist when it comes to uh, the Bible, and he was there to augment the prosecution. If you want to see a, a movie that depicts the Scopes Monkey Trial, I can uh, recommend Inherit the Wind is the title of the film, and uh, it uh, stars Spencer Tracy as Clarence Darrow, and uh, it takes you through uh, the trial. The, uh, it's recommended. It's also a bit, of a, um, a bit of a comment on the McCarthyism, the witch hunts of the 1950s, which we'll get into a little later. Uh, the results of the trial. Scopes is found guilty. He's fined, I think, $100. Of course, the ACLU pays the fine. Uh, a week later, oddly enough, William Jennings Bryan dies uh, in his sleep. Uh, the outcome of the trial, of course, is the Butler Act is upheld. Now, this opens up a, uh, decades of litigation regarding what is to be taught in the science classroom. Uh, indeed, these, uh, these court cases continue. Uh, there was a court case 10, 15 years ago in Pennsylvania whereby uh, a battle over science books, uh, a science book that uh, had the perspective of intelligent design as opposed to the more traditional biology books that follow Darwinian natural selection. So the, the battle uh, over this issue has not ended, it continues. Again, you can uh, mark this up to those sort of last vestiges of traditional American WASP values, uh, fighting and fighting uh, to hold on to some control over their school districts and over what is taught to their children. Uh, these things that are being taught to their children, of course, contradict their faith. And uh, this is the source of uh, resentment and uh, ongoing litigation. Uh, again, if natural selection could be taught 
in the public schools or even in the colleges in such a way that it was understandable to people, I think a lot of this ignorance would go away. Um, you can uh, Google uh, Darwinian evidence for natural selection and take a look at some of the evidence yourself. If you look at um, charts of animal forelimbs, for instance, you can see a wide variety of creatures from man to bats to whales to you name it. Uh, and you can count the bones in the forelimbs of these creatures. Uh, you can look at form and function. Now, ostensibly, there are obviously going to be differences between a man's arm and a whale's fin. But if you look at form and function and count the number of bones, you will see that there's a remarkable similarity. Uh, Darwin would say you have a couple of choices here. Uh, you can point to these, uh, this design, if you want to call it that, and say that God was so enamored with this particular design that he used it repeatedly. Uh, with, with uh, unlimited number of species. Or you can look at the similarity in design and form and function and you can say, as Darwin did, that all of these creatures were derived from a common ancestor. Um, again, this is a scientific topic of great complexity and it takes some commitment on the part of the student uh, to understand it. And uh, the Scopes Monkey Trial brought this ongoing argument to the nation. And what makes it unique as well is that radio broadcast this trial. So the entire country could listen to this trial as it happened. And uh, newspaper men uh, took down verbatim records of the, uh, of the trial, of the testimony. And people could read these transcripts in their newspapers. So this was truly a nationwide event taking place here in little Dayton, Tennessee, uh, which uh, most people, of course, had never heard of. So uh, I'm going to end this lecture by reiterating the importance of traditional American values, WASP values, under attack from here, uh, in this case, uh, from modernity, from, sci from science, and uh, an increasingly pluralistic and secular society. Thanks.